My name is Johnny Miller. I'm a point blank online tutor and I, I write courses and I teach uh, Ableton Live courses for point blank. Uh, tonight I'm putting a little sketch together uh, using some of the sounds from the Loop Masters Jack Sparrow uh, sound pack. And Jack Sparrow being one of my favorite dubstep producers. Uh, very, very versatile producer though. If you're into stuff like Subtract or Night Slugs Records, Bok Bok, that kind of sound, you know, the post dubstep stuff, then you know, load, there's loads and loads of sounds that you could use in here. It's not just deep dubstep or kind of dirty dubstep. It's um, a little bit more intricate, a little bit more percussive. And um, that's why I personally quite like it. Uh, I'm going to do a, uh, going to show you a little uh, trick in this tutorial using MIDI effects um, on this little old school uh, synth hit that I've got loaded into this simpler device. And um, but before I do that, let me quickly show you inside this sample pack. Uh, we've got construction kits, six construction kits that are quite fun to kind of put the track together and twist it around and uh, re kind of recreate one of the Jack Sparrow tracks in your way. Um, but also you've got this main folder here, which is atmospheres, drum hits, instruments, which is one of the ones I've used. I've used one of the old school keys here. And these are great. They just sound, you know, the quality is amazing. Um, and you've got some really, really nice bass sounds too. Lots of different styles. So again, it's a really, really versatile pack. It's, uh, it's one that I know I'm going to be using in my own tracks quite a lot, I think, in the coming months. Um, anyway, let's go over here and I'll show you what I've got. And uh, at the moment, it's just a beat and uh, one of these simple old school riffs uh, on the in the key of C, um, just in a simpler device. And inside the MIDI clip, I've just literally just posted one note, uh, one bar long. And I'm going to use arpeggiator and chord to create some interesting little effects. I'm going to kind of turn this uh, chord from a single long note into a short kind of staccato notes using arpeggiator and then show you some of the tricks that you can use um, with arpeggiator and with the chord device to kind of make new music. Here are the drums, just from the Jack Sparrow, one of the uh, construction kits in the Jack Sparrow pack, just to give me a little backing beat for this tutorial really. And here I've just used the old school C3, which is a chord sample. And I've just programmed in a four bar pattern here, quite simple. Just moving down one semitone at the end of the four bar pattern. That's a really kind of very traditional dubstep melody. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go and add some uh, MIDI effects to this old school chord sample. And uh, just do something a little bit more interesting with it. If I go to the MIDI effects folder and just bring in arpeggiator. So because I've got long notes inside my MIDI clip, arpeggiator is going to take those notes and create a series of staccato single notes. At the moment, we've got the rate value set to 1 over 8. If I bring that up to 1 over 16 and press play. Let's just solo this for a second. So there, instead of having long notes, We've got 16th notes that Arpeggiator is creating now. And this is how MIDI effects work. They take the MIDI note from the clip, affect it, and then send the affected signal into the instrument, which triggers the sound. Unlike regular effects, which affect the outgoing signal from uh, an instrument or device. The other thing we can do here, well, two things we can do here with Arpeggiator. Firstly, I can use the steps value to bring the arpeggiated pattern up a couple of uh, octaves. And that just sounds a bit more interesting. And also use the gate value here to kind of open and close the decay almost. And it sounds really nice sometimes when you uh, experiment with the rate value and the gate value. You can kind of create arcade style effects just using a faster rate. Also with the, uh, the groove here, at the moment it's on the straight groove. If I change that to the swing 16, and here the gate value really affects arpeggiator's performance.
Next up, I'm going to bring in the chord device. And this is just going to bring in an extra note into the proceedings. If I change the shift value down to uh, shift one, down minus 12 semitones, that's one full octave. Now, instead of just having one MIDI note coming into arpeggiator, we've got two. And we get much deeper notes triggered thanks to arpeggiator. Now what I want to do is put these devices into uh, a rack so I can set up some macro controls and control them with a bit more ease. I don't have to go and find the parameter on the device. If I select chord and then hold down shift and click on the simpler device, all those three are selected now and I can right click and group. And now if I open up the macro controls, there are my macro controls. I'm just going to assign some of these macro controls now to uh, rate and gate and maybe the filter too. If I switch the filter on, let's bring in the filter in here too. So I'm going to hit map mode and uh, let's click on the filter frequency and anything green now on these devices I can map. So I've clicked on filter frequency. I'm going to click on macro one and then I'm going to click on the arpeggiator rate, put that on macro two and the arpeggiator gate, and put that on macro three. And there are my values at the top here. I can kind of change the minimum and maximum values. So I'm going to change that to, uh, I'm going to start at 16 and go down to eight, I think there, on the arpeggiator rate. And let's bring these values up and down a bit as well. The filter I'm going to leave alone. And that just sets the ranges on these pots. So there I set the sync rate, the lowest value at 1 over 16, the highest at 1 over 8. So I can quickly switch between those two values just by turning that pot up and down. And the filter as well, filtering up or low, or low pass filtering in this case down to 30 hertz. So I get loads and loads of different patterns. flavors just out of this rack now. I've got my three main parameters set up that I want to play with in the production. Okay, you can learn loads of cool stuff like this at pointblankonline.net and I'll be back again next week to show you some tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Peace.